All right, so here's my asymmetrical motor. I hooked it up to a circuit. Um, again, I'm I'm only there's there's a pancake coil in the middle of this vortex coil. It's, it's right in here. So I'm, I'm running. Uh, it's a bifiler coil. So each end I'm coming out here. So it makes a connection with our motor, and it basically acts as a switch now pulsing this coil and I'm catching the back EMF spike um, or the radiant with this one and the rodent coil um, connected together and that's going into the back here um, the circuit I'm using is this circuit so <clears throat> instead of uh, the oscillator pulsing a primary and having a secondary which pulls the radiant off um, I'm pulsing the primary side here, I guess, and as it rotates around, I'm pretending that's my secondary, which has the radiant present. So, um, I'm basically pulling radiant out of my circuit here, and what's cool is when I have this thing hooked up, um, I'm getting almost 115, 116 volts DC, so we'll, we'll turn it on. This is uh, this LED shows the back EMF spike of the pancake coil as it's pulsed, and um, I'll show you the top voltage first. So it's got a hundred and yeah, it's pretty good. We can see the LED. Look at how long it stays on and off. So we got energy, and with that voltage potential, we can also light up this neon a little bit. But it works a lot better when we have a capacitor across the primary. It runs a lot faster. We don't get as much radiant out, but uh, we use a lot less amperage, and we kill our radiant on this side too. But, uh, yeah, there's my asymmetrical motor being used with this radiant energy um, circuit. Thanks for watching.